वेलकम बैक एज द टाइम हैज फाइनली कम एस एस रॉग एल एप नाउ ऑफिशियली सपोर्ट्स ए एफ एम एफ टू ए एम डी ट्रैवल एवल इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ रेम जनरेशन एस एस जस्ट रिलीज द न्यू जी पी ओ ड्राइवर अ फ्यू आर्स अगो दिस इज द वर्जन थर्टी टू पॉइंट जीरो पॉइंट वन टू जीरो वन वन पॉइंट सेवन जीरो जीरो वन दिस इज द अपडेट लॉग एट सपोर्ट फॉर ए एफ एम एफ टू बग फिक्स फिक्स एन इशू विद द डिवाइस स्क्रीन मे श्योर I have already covered in detail the stable release of AFMF2 on ROG LF, which was a part of AMD GPU driver Eternal in version 24.9.1. Not much has changed since then. If you are an old-time viewer, you already know everything about AFMF2. So in this video, I'll only cover the basics of AFMF2. Here I am assuming that you are upgrading from AFMF version one. We'll show you how to properly set up AFMF2 on ROG LF. First thing first, I'll update my LS GPU driver. Now. I am using LS official GPU driver. The previous one, version thirty two point zero point one one zero two one point three thousand two. If you are using AMD's GPU driver, you need to uninstall it using DDU. Then you can flash the latest GPU driver. As I am using the official GPU driver, I'll just update my GPU driver directly from Army Crate application. Just open it, click on Update Center, check for update. The new GPU driver update should show up here. Along with some other updates for LR, there you go. There's the update. You can see some other updates as well. I'll just click on Update All. I haven't updated my LR in a long time. Downloading. Just wait for the process to complete. Download complete. In this prompt popped up. Firmware Update Tool. Just click on Update here. During the GPU update process, display will flash multiple times. Do not worry. It's a normal process. The screen went black. Should be working again soon. Yeah. Firmware update tool popped up again. Firmware is up to date. Close. We are not done yet. As you can see, don't have access to the update button here. This means some updates are getting installed in the background. Need to wait. Need to restart ROG LR. We are in. I'll just open internal and software. This should be its version after updating to the latest GPU driver, 24.20.11.07, released on 15 November 2024. Open any game that Elden Ring profile. Just select Elden Ring. Here you should be seeing AFMF2. There you go. Now I'll quickly go through the improvements that AFMF2 offers over AFMF1. It fixes the biggest flaw of AFMF1, that is frame generation smoothing effect getting disabled during fast visual motion. But this comes at the cost of image quality. Minor graphical artifacts are produced around the character model, but I'll be very honest with you: these artifacts are not easily noticeable on a small display, especially when the base FPS is on the higher side, higher than 60. AMD recommends a minimum of 60 as the base FPS for using this technology. This helps in keeping the latency in check and reduces the graphical artifacts that frame generation technique produces. But I'll be honest with you: decent results are produced even when the base FPS is around 40. At about 30 FPS, some artifacts are noticeable, like garbled textures around the character model. But you can still use this technique even with the base FPS of 30. Version one used to produce a latency value of around 40 milliseconds on ROG LR. With version two, latency value usually stays within a range of 15 to 20 milliseconds. Yes, you heard it right. It's less than half of the latency value of AFMF1. API support has been expanded for AFMF2. Version 1 was only compatible with DirectX 12 API, whereas version 2 is compatible with OpenGL, Vulkan, DirectX 11, and DirectX 12 APIs. Version 2 supports both full screen and borderless full screen modes, whereas version 1 only supported full screen mode. Version 2 is even compatible with Radeon Chill. This setting is available in Eternal in software. It's a low latency FPS capping solution. If the game's base FPS is higher than 60 on ROG LR, just cap the FPS at 60 using Radeon Chill. Now, when you enable AFMF2, it will try to double the FPS by adding interpolated frames. FPS will not exceed 120, that is ROG LR's maximum refresh rate. This will result in a very smooth-looking animation. In order to use Radeon Chill, just need to enable it and set the idle and peak FPS values to 60, basically the same values. Another thing that you need to know is that when you enable Radeon Chill, you won't be able to use Radeon Anti-Lag. Anti-Lag helps in reducing the latency. So if the game's base FPS is lower than 60 on LR, don't use Radeon Chill. Just enable AFMF2. 
along with anti-lag, it got enabled automatically. I'll quickly explain AFMF2's settings now. First we have search mode, set to auto by default. Now when you set it to standard, AFMF2 just works like AFMF1. Frame generation smoothing effect will get disabled during fast visual motion. Don't use it on ROG LM, just set it to high. This ensures that frame generation smoothing effect does not get disabled during fast visual motion. Performance mode, just set it to quality. I tried using performance preset of performance mode. Tint observe any noticeable improvement in performance. You'll get the best looking image quality with the quality preset here. Quality. Elden Ring's FPS is already capped at 60 so I won't be using Radiant Chill. I'll be using AFMF2 along with Anti-Lag. Again make sure V-Sync is off, FreeSync is on. First I'll just run the game without AFMF2. Before that I'll show you how to set up Adrenal Lens Overlay. Very important. Only Adrenal Lens Overlay can show the true FPS count with AFMF2 enabled. Third party overlays like Afterburner or even Ally's own overlay won't be able to show the true FPS count. First just click on the settings cog here. Then click on preferences. Enable this setting in game overlay. Now if you are using Adrenal Lens software for the first time, you will be required to provide USC permission. Just click on the bell icon here. USC permission will be shown under the messages section, not in my case as I have already provided the permission. Click on the settings cog here, click on performance, click on overlay, enable this setting, enable matrix overlay. There is the overlay. Now click on tracking, before that increase the size of it and just set it to 140, 30. Entirely up to you. Tracking. From here we can select the performance matrix that we want to see in the overlay. First expand FPS. Red icon means the metric will be shown in the overlay. If you click on the eye again it will turn grey. Metric will be removed from the overlay. Frame rate enabled. Average frame time disabled. Frame time enabled. 99% FPS disabled. Up to you. Micro stutter rate disable, heavy stutter rate off. Graphics API very important, enable it, click on the eye. There it is. Latency very important again, enable it, expand it. Frame generation lag value very important, see. GPU memory enable it, expand. Expand GPU section as well, GPU utilization enable, GPU clock speed enable as well. GPU power consumption enable. This is basically the APU power consumption. GPU temperature on, voltage off, GPU memory on, memory utilization on, memory clock speed not important off, CPU on, expand the section, utilization on, system memory on, expand the section, memory utilization on. So this is the final overlay, how it looks like. Now click on overlay here. Enable this setting, game detection for matrix overlay, it's gone, it will be enabled automatically when you launch any game. The hotkey combo for enabling this adrenal and overlay is Ctrl Shift and O. You can even add an AFMF toggle to command center, show you the process, just open army grid. Click on the settings cog here, under edit command center, click on add, here look for AFMF, there it is, select it. Now if you press the command center button, AFMF should pop up here, there it is. Connected my Gully Kit KK3 Max Gamepad 12 have to Tooth Mode. Launch center ring, I have set the UMA buffer size to 5GB. My is running on BIOS version 441. Using a 30 watts manual profile, all 3 power values set at 30 watts. 900p resolution, CPU boost disable. Yeah, AFMF2 off. anti lag setting enabled, this is eternal lens overlay. Choose the status of adrenaline features. In game settings, display mode set to borderless window, 900p resolution. I am basically using the medium preset, motion blur disabled, anti aliasing quality set to high, low illumination set to low. There is a character. This is Shadow of Water expansion. I am in the graveside plane area. Yeah, here FPS is around 50, not hitting the GPU bottleneck, 90% GPU load. Game's performance is limited by the single core CPU performance. Check out the input response. This is the game running without AFMF2, Graphics API DirectX 12. Now we can enable AFMF2 on the fly by pressing its hotkey combo. It is Alt Shift and G. I was not able to get AFMF2 working by enabling it from command center shortcut C. 
nothing happened frame generation lag value should be dis beg your pardon should be displayed if AFM2 is working I'll just enable AFM2 manually open a title in settings press alt plus R keys together gaming games adrenaline profile will pop up there you go from here enable AFMF2 yeah check its status it should be active this green tick should be present here search mode set to high performance mode set to quality go back to the game there's a character you can see FPS increased to around 90 frame generation lag value only 16 milliseconds this is very good any value under 20 milliseconds is good GPU utilization almost maxed out and check out the input response very small increase in latency nothing extreme you can definitely play the game no significant graphical artifacts games hard elements are also not flickering very good results in Elden Ring 2 back you find Elden Ring <laughs> the best part of AFMF2 is that you can even use it with the game's online mode should be some combat as well go through the bridge very demanding sequence ATFS here I'm heading for castle front Oh no, got stabbed. 70 FPS. Still, the game is running smoothly. Was to show how effective AFMF2 is. Okay, I'll just kill these guys. Why am I running away? I'm wearing red arms armor. 80 FPS. So, excellent results in Elden Ring with the FMF2 now I'll be testing the next game I'll show you how to disable AFMF2 on the flag press its hotkey combo Alt Shift and G we'll be seeing its status here got disabled if you press the hotkey combo again it will get enabled again like this now I'll be testing everyone's favorite game Red Dead Redemption Part 2 Game center and profile, FreeSync enable, VSync off. First, I'll run the game without AFMF2. I'm on the Rockstar Launcher version of the game. This time, I'll be capping the game's FPS at 60 using Radiant Chill. In game settings, this time I'm running the game using Vulcan mode. AFMF2 will still work. Screen type windowed borderless, VSync, and triple buffering disabled. Texture quality set to high, isotropic filtering set to 16 times. Restore setting set to medium. FSR to enable using the upscaler's quality preset. Vulcan API. There's a character. Here we are getting around 55 FPS. I was expecting the FPS to be higher than 60. That did not happen. I usually run the game using DirectX 12 mode. This time I switched to Vulcan. I think that caused the performance regression. Even the VRAM usage shown here is not accurate. Just pause the game. Your hair FPS increased to around 136. I'll be applying a 60 FPS cap using Radiant Chill. Wanted to show you that feature. Input delay without AFMF2. Now I'll open a title in settings. Press Alt plus R keys together. AFMF2 on. Search mode set to high. Performance mode set to quality. Anti lag setting got enabled. But I'll be enabling Radiant Chill setting. This will disable anti lag setting. See, just set the ideal and peak FPS values to 60. This will apply a 60 FPS cap. We sync off. Back to the game. It's paused. Check out the FPS count now 120. See, not exceeding ROG LS maximum refresh rate value. Now the game's FPS will stay within LS VR range that is 48 to 120. can observe the added amount of smoothness this is amazing fps value is around 105 but i am also observing some garbled textures around the character model 
I'll be honest, it's a bit difficult to observe these garbled textures when you move the camera at a normal speed like this. Game's HUD elements are not flickering. Input delay is not a problem. You can see the frame generation lag value only 12 milliseconds. This is just amazing. Crosshair is not flickering. I have seen this happening in some games when using LSFG. I highly recommend it to use AFIR2 in this game. I would recommend using DirectX 12 instead of Vulkan. Good addition for raw Ally AFMF2. I have already tested many games with AFMF2. You will find these videos on the channel. Do check them out. So that's it with the video guys. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.